Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? Maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. We'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible, because it's the divinely inspired word of God, and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate, and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes. We'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages, to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community. We believe that it's our job to make it a better place. No matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're with us today. We hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out his plan for us. Welcome to Craig Albert Church. Good morning and welcome to Church Online. Thank you so much for connecting. It's great to have you here with us at Craig Albert Church today. How are you feeling? How's life been this past week? Have you had ups as much as downs? Have you struggled through all the restrictions and regulations and trying to figure out a way forward? Whatever your week has been like until this point so far, I'm glad that you've connected. I believe that God again wants to speak into your life and mine through his presence and through his power. I don't know where you're watching from today, if you are local here in Cumbernauld, or if you're from somewhere across the world through the technology and the YouTube and the Facebook channels that we have. But wherever you are, whether you're alone or you're surrounded by people, I want to tell you now that God wants to meet with you today. I've got an exciting update with regard to Derek, who we're going to see singing um, in our worship team. So stick with us. But today as we come, let's come believing. Let's come and acknowledge who God is and then wait to hear what he has to say to us. This might be your first time connecting with church. Welcome. You might have been with us through this whole lockdown experience. Thank you for sticking with us. But let's spend time now in prayer before we worship and ask God to bless us. Let's pray now. Father, as we come into your presence, I'm thankful that you are an all-known, all-powerful and almighty God, yet you still want to connect and invest, and inspire people like me. And Lord, I know that I'm not worthy of that, but it's because of your amazing grace. And as we sing this song now, Lord, I ask that we would know your presence real with us. Whether we're alone or we're surrounded by people, Lord, that you would speak. And that when you speak, lives are changed. Help us to be open to that today. We pray in your name. Amen.
On Tuesday night when we were having our prayer time together, I asked Derek for an update about his scan that he'd had the previous day and the results had literally just come in. And it was amazing to see with our own eyes the reduction from the scan of the cancer that Derek has. For those that don't know, Derek was diagnosed with a rare form of lung cancer, which was also in his lymph nodes, in his adrenal gland, in his liver and also in his spine. And they have seen significant reduction um, as a result of this scan with the medicine that they've been giving them and with the prayers of God people. And it's been so exciting. I was actually lost for words. I know that's hard to believe. I want to play a song in a minute by a group of young people from all over the central belt of Scotland who recorded a song that reminds us that God never fails. You might need to hear that this morning. Our God never fails. And you'll see Lois in this, you'll see Graham and Lewis Haxton, and you'll see others, other young folks from various churches across the central belt. I want you to enjoy it, but listen to the words. I believe in miracles, I believe that God answers prayer, and I believe that our God never fails. So enjoy this song as you listen to it from Momentum. Every 
So what would you say are the three top things that you have achieved in your life until this point right now? It might be like the, other, the others that we've heard when it came to it was family achievements or education achievements or overcoming an obstacle or a barrier that was in your own life and you think, yes, I've done it. It could be the achievement of flying to as many destinations as possible before lockdown happened. Or climbing that mountain that you've always wanted to do. I don't know what it would be for you. What are your top three that you would say that you've achieved? It's important to look back in our lives and see these amazing things. And also the journey that we've been on. You might have different aims and objectives still in your sights. Things that you're still striving towards. And you're looking to see how can I get to the next level? And how can I achieve that for myself? And the examples that we saw earlier on, these were all brilliant achievements. And I don't want to take away from any of those achievements and what we're going to look at today in Philippians chapter 3. But I want us to see a different perspective from where Paul is coming from. And Paul, as he speaks to this church in Philippi, has a passion to make sure that nobody takes them off the path or nobody gives them wrong directions or wrong teaching that's going to affect them along the way. And we see that passage. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3 together. It says, whatever happens, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Paul knew that these people were going to live a life of faith that would have experiences where they'd been top of the mountain, but also that they might be in the deepest valley. And he says, whatever happens, folks, I want you to rejoice in the Lord. Not rejoice in your circumstances or rejoice what you're going through, but I want you to rejoice in the Lord. Let that be your constant. And there's a lesson straight, straight away. But he says, I never get tired of telling you these things. And I do it to safeguard your faith. Paul was passionate about sharing his heart and his desire and his teaching with this church so that they would be safe. And he says, I'll never get tired of telling you this. And I have to tell you this morning, I really count it a privilege that I get a chance every week to come and share what God's word is saying with you wherever you're at. Why? Because it safeguards your faith. It might help you discover faith for the first time. But I want you to watch because Paul says this in verse 2. Watch out for those dogs those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. For we who worship the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us because there was a teaching coming into the church that was kind of questioning the Christians. Are you really a believer? Are you really a follower of Jesus? Are you really saved? Because what they were doing was trying to cling on to the old ways. And part of that was for Jewish boys, they would be circumcised on the eighth day. And what people were coming along and saying is, are you really saved? Because you haven't went through this specific ritual. And Paul is trying to tell the church, be careful and watch out for people that come and try to tell you anything else but what I have taught you. The gospel that I've discovered. They're trying to add things to it. They're trying to confuse you. They're trying to mix you up. He says, watch out for these dogs. Watch out for these evil folks. But he then tells them, no, no, it's not about these things. It's all about Jesus. And this seems to be the common thread that runs through this whole book. He says, we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. I don't know how many times you've seen in life, people think that their religion, that their faith is all dependent on what they do or what they don't do. The people that they help, the impact that they have in their world in a practical sense. And it all comes down to human effort. If I do enough, if I achieve enough, then that will make me good enough in God's sight. And Paul's saying, that's no how it works. Don't have confidence in your human effort, your human understanding. That's not how it's going to work. But if that was the case, 
And this is, I find it fascinating that Paul speaks this way. He's saying, though I could have confidence in my own effort, and I would imagine he was trying to get the listeners to listen up here. Because remember he was talking in the last section about humility. Well, it kind of seems that he goes a wee bit off that. And he says, if anyone could, indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. And then he lists to them his CV. He says, look at my achievements. And he starts to unpack the kind of guy that Paul was. At this time when he would be known as Saul. He says, I was circumcised when I was eight, de eight, eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. A real Hebrew, if there ever was one. He ticked the box with the rituals. He ticked the box with the family line and reputation. He ticked the box of being a Hebrew above all Hebrews. He then says to them, I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strict ob strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so ze zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, being right with God, I obeyed the law without fault. Listen to this guy's pedigree. Listen to his CV. Listen to his achievements. But then he says something that I want you to hear today. And it's something that I had to be reminded of this week. John, it's not about what you've done. It's not even about what you're doing. But I want you to listen carefully to what he says. Verse 7, he says, I once thought these things were valuable. He lived his life committed and faithful, investing in all these things that he's just talked about. And he says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now... I consider them worthless. Why? Because of what Christ has done. You see, there was a moment in Paul's life where he recognized that all the achievements, all the things that he had done, all the things, that, all the obedience and all these things, yes, it was important in his life experience, but at this point, he considered it all worthless. Let's read what else he says. Yes, everything else is worthless, when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. Listen to what Paul is saying. What does this mean for us today? He says all these things that everybody else put value on, what I put value on, I count it as worthless in comparison with knowing the infinite value of knowing Christ, of knowing Jesus. That is a huge statement. That is a huge moment that Paul comes to. And he's sharing with these believers to say all the things that you think are valuable and important when you compare them to knowing Jesus they almost fade into insignificance. Because when you know Jesus, not just know about Jesus or who Jesus was, but when you know him for yourself, you will see that that supersedes everything. In fact, everything else looks worthless in comparison. Now, we as humans have achieved some amazing things in our life and our experience, thinking about the things that are going on even in our world now, with technology, with science, with the breakthroughs that we see, and God has given this amazing ability for us to expand and to see things achieved and happen. And these are all good things and worthwhile things. But Paul says in comparison with knowing Jesus, and what I think he's saying here is, don't just scrap everything and throw all these things away. What I believe he's saying is, when you really see who Jesus is, and compare that with these things, and he becomes Lord, when he becomes number one, and he is over all these things in your life, he will enhance these achievements. He will encourage these achievements, but he will be over these achievements in his power. Because Paul wanted them to see that it wasn't through their human effort. 
It wasn't through what they could do. It wasn't about their past reputation, but it was about their experience with Jesus in that moment. How do we know that? He says this, I no longer count on my own righteousness. Paul wasn't looking to say, how hard can I obey? How much can I do to try and please God, to balance out the scales of the good and bad? Sometimes we can live like that. I've not been that bad this week. Have you ever heard yourself saying that? He says, I don't count on my own righteousness through obeying the law, through the doing of things. He says, rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. It's as simple as that. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on what? It depends on faith. Not what we can do. Not our own human effort. Not by proving anything. But in simple belief. In simple faith. But listen to what he says. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Is that your desire this morning? Do you really want to know Jesus through faith? The Bible tells us that it's possible. The people at the start of the passage that Paul was warning against, he wanted them to see that when they were questioned about their faith, that they could say, no, it is by grace that I have been saved through faith. He wanted them to see that the words that it says, um, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved from that path of destruction, from that life of sin and from that separation from God. That is a promise. When the Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And this could impact your whole household. I want to ask you today, do you know by faith who Jesus is? Do you know him? Not just know about him, but do you really know him? And I had to challenge myself this week as I came again to prepare. How much do I know him? And how much do I know about him? Because what Paul says here is, I want to know and experience the mighty power. We've heard about that earlier on. God's mighty power and action in the life of someone who knows Jesus. Would you like to know him and experience that power? I know I do. And I've been so encouraged this week as I've seen God move in faith. But then he says, I want to suffer with him. Sharing in his death so that in one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead because Paul was filled with hope and knowing that this faith that he had would make a difference and then he comes to them and it's a different tone to when he's saying look at what I've achieved look at what I've done he then brings it back in verse 12 to say I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already achieved perfection I want to tell you right now I struggle as you struggle I don't get it right all of the time. I'm in the same journey of faith as you and I need your encouragement as you need my encouragement. I need your help as, as, as much as you need my help. We're in this together. We've thought about that. The faces that are on this screen, the people who are watching right now, we've not achieved, we're not ready there. We re remember in Philippians 1 where it says, he who began a good work will continue it and day by day we need to continue but we've not achieved it or reached that perfection. But what does he say? I press on to possess that perfection for what Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. So what are we going to do this morning to press on in our faith, to push forward and to discover that mighty power that God has for us? It says, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past. And often it's the past that holds you back and holds me back. Because there's things in our past that we're no proud of. Things, regrets, maybe shame, things that we, we wish had never happened. And you think God could never use somebody like me. Forget the past. Forget what went on. Forget what's even going on to this point right now. And say, God, I want you to show me the future. Because that's what he says here. Forgetting the past 
and looking forward to what lies ahead, folks. I'm looking forward to what God's going to do in your life and my life and the life of this church. And I want to press on and I want to focus on this one thing. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And then it says, let all who are spiritually mature agree in these things. If you disagree in some point, I believe that God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress that we have already made. And then he urges them to live, it says, in the pattern that he has lived and learn from those that you follow their examples. And it tells us that he's saying this with tears in his eyes. He's so passionate about it because he wants to safeguard them and protect them and help them on this journey. And then he talks about some people's attitudes and why they do it and their motives, and we thought about that last week. But I want to ask you today, are you ready to press on? Are you ready to push forward? Are you ready to focus on one thing and say what well, that one thing is, knowing Jesus? Because when I put that in comparison with all the things that I've ever achieved, these things seem worthless. But I want to tell you with Jesus, he can enhance the achievements that you have. He can be part of the achievements that you have. He can be everything in the achievements that you have and it comes through faith. Stop trying to do things and be somebody just to please God. Come and believe. Come with faith. And come and ask today to experience his mighty power that comes through knowing Jesus. And if you want to know Jesus for the first time today, I want you to reach out right now. If you've recognized that you've taken your eyes off knowing Jesus on a day-to-day -day basis, it's time to get your eyes back on him and focus on this one thing. And then let's see what God's going to do and what happens in the future. In your life, in my life, in this church's life, and in our world. Because we are living this life of faith together. There's a wee song that we sometimes sing that says, All I once held dear, built my life upon, all this world reveres and wars to own. All I once thought gain, I now count as loss, spent and worthless now compared to this. And the chorus says, Knowing Jesus, there is no greater thing. So why don't we today, as our service comes to a close, Take a moment to think, is that your experience? Is that my experience? We build a life on so many things. We try to grab as much as we can, but knowing Jesus is the greatest discovery and the greatest achievement that you will find in your life, it will transform it forever. So I want to ask you now, as we finish and as I pray, maybe even just put a comment in the box below. Knowing Jesus, there is no greater thing. And you might want to respond today and say, I want to live for him. You might want to respond today and say, I want to know Jesus. 
for myself. I would love to help you on that discovery. You may have taken your eyes off Jesus as you've walked a life of faith and you're recognising today that you're grabbing on and grasping the wrong things. It's time to get back. It's time to return. It's time to know Jesus afresh. So let's just pray as we finish our service together. And if you want to connect with me, then please use the email address or the phone number provided. Let's pray now. Father, I do thank you for this morning, for the reminder from your word that knowing Jesus, there's nothing that compares. And forgive us, Lord, for the times that we try to build our lives on the things that don't last and the things that don't really matter. Forgive us, Lord, when we put our achievements over that relationship with you. Thank you that you have given us the gifts and the talents and the abilities that you've given us to achieve. But Lord, help us to put you over all of that and give you the glory and praise. There's somebody watching today that needs to start that journey of knowing you, Jesus. Give them the courage to reach out. Lord, if there's somebody who's taken their eyes off you and they've been walking away, but it's time for them to get back, Lord, help them to refocus. But Lord, thank you for the encouragement that we've had today. Thank you that we've heard about lives that have been transformed. And I pray, Lord, that that would be my life today. And the people who are watching, we pray this in your name. Amen.